is the VSB TV, TV 11 News for Tuesday, February 11th. I'm Peter Cattell. A 23-year-old man appeared in magistrate's court this morning on charges of punching a bus driver in an unprovoked altercation. Kenneth Leverock pleaded guilty in magistrate's court to assaulting Edmund Phillips on January 9th in Southampton. The court heard that Mr. Phillips was driving the bus when Leverock rang the bell to get off the bus near Industrial Road in Southampton. The defendant then proceeded to walk down the center aisle on the bus, and when he got to the front, he punched the driver several times. Senior Magistrate Archibald Warner ordered pre-sentencing reports and granted Leverock $5,000 bail. In addition, the defendant also has to wear an electronic monitoring device and be confined to his home 24 hours a day. In light of yet another attack on a bus driver occurring just yesterday, which led to a female bus driver needing hospital treatment, it has many asking, is heightened security needed on the buses? VSB's Julia Smet took to the streets of Hamilton and asked folks whether they support heightened security on buses and what type of security do they think would help to eliminate antisocial behavior on buses. We're just trying to ask people if you think that security on the buses should be stepped up and if, and if so, in what way? Yes, I believe security should be stepped up and I think maybe they could probably hire a private team of um, security guards to be able to drive on the buses the same way so that old and every passenger plus the driver can be protected. Well, I think the best persons to inform us on that are the bus drivers themselves because they're on the ground actually dealing with the situation. They know when they feel threatened and when it's actually okay in a situation that an adult can deal with, an adult can handle. Um, but what I don't want is for locals and tourists alike to knee-jerk reaction and get the bus drivers to arm themselves, have glass plating or plastic shields between them and the passengers. We, I mean, we would lose a lot of our openness, we become a society a little bit more engaged with fear. Well, I know overseas quite a few uh, bus drivers that are actually contained in this uh, unit where you can't get to them. Uh, I don't see any reason why we can't do that. Or um, security cameras, that's a pretty cost effective way as well. Sure. What, what's your personal opinion about the increase of altercations on bus drivers? I don't know why in particular it's increased on them. Uh, I mean, there's a lot of unemployment, people are stressed, so I'm sure that's contributing to it. Um, I think it's sad. They're a sitting target. The people on their buses are just as frustrated as anybody in the world, and unfortunately, everybody's looking for someone, a scapegoat, and they always attack the person that is vulnerable. I don't know how you can step up security on the buses per se. Um, I think it's a bigger issue than just on transportation. It's kind of everywhere. So I don't feel unsafe on buses. I take ferries and buses and that fairly frequently. So personally I have, I have no safety concerns. Some of the bus drivers has, have suggested putting uh, security cameras on board. Would you be in support of that? And do you think it would change things? I don't know if it would change things, but I would definitely support it in case, you know, things escalate and the way things are going. Tomorrow is the fourth annual Sexual and Reproductive Health Awareness Day in Bermuda, during which the Department of Health is encouraging parents, teenagers, and couples to have the conversation about sexual health. The need for such a conversation is urgent, since in 2013, over 450 cases of sexually transmitted infections were reported to the Epidemiology and Surveillance Unit. And this was made up of 322 cases of chlamydia, 70 cases of herpes, 40 cases of gonorrhea, 11 cases of syphilis, and 7 cases of HIV. Although 60% of all STIs were diagnosed in persons under 30, almost 60% of those living with HIV are over the age of 50. The day is therefore an annual health promotion event which seeks to encourage residents to promote safer sex behavior. The 15 participants in the Vendor Marketing Seminar Series sponsored by the Bermuda Economic Development Corporation have now graduated. Home Affairs Minister Michael Fay and BEDC Chairman Nicholas Kemp presided over a certificate presentation ceremony yesterday at BEDC headquarters in Sophia House. The goal of this program was to develop successful, vibrant, vibrant markets that would promote entrepreneurship at the most fundamental levels. This initiative has now become well established. We are excited that of all of the three markets that it supports, the St. George's Old Town Market, the Rubber Tree Market, and the Hidden Treasures Market have grown a number of ways over the years. 
Currently, there are nearly 200 vendors registered with the BDC. However, it's estimated that number is low as it only reflects those vendors who have registered themselves and does not account for the many more who have not registered. BEDC continues to see growth in this sector as many turn to vending as a way to make ends meet while giving them the opportunity to take their first steps into entrepreneurship. The BEDC remains vigilant in its mandate to support vendors and the vendor markets through vendor training, market knowledge, as well as the provision of site materials. One of the BEDC's key goals is to strengthen the vendor market industry and provide avenues for microenterprise to grow in Bermuda. Hence the development and piloting of this series of skills development workshops for the benefit of all vendors. The Vendor Market Seminar Series was designed to expose vendors to all the government requirements and information they need to know so that their business venture can be successful and operate at the highest standards. BDC sees growth opportunities for microenterprise, hence our attention to this industry since 2006. Bermuda Tourism's increased emphasis on engaging consumers across social media platforms has resulted in its official Facebook page surpassing the milestone of 100,000 likes. Since February 1, 2013, Bermuda has experienced a 91% increase in the number of followers across this key social network. CEO of the Bermuda Tourism Authority, Bill Hanbury, stated, We are extremely pleased to see how tourism's Facebook page has grown to become one of the most influential platforms to reach potential visitors. Mr. Hanbury went on to say that the Tourism Authority understands the importance of social media and are placing a great deal of emphasis on their digital assets going forward. Still ahead on the TV11 News, two talented musicians bring us the special combination of organ and flute. But next is Rachel with the weather preview. Thanks, Peter. Light winds and a few passing, mainly light showers. On the radar, we can see showers sort of lingering in the marine area, but it looks like things might take a turn for the worse later in the week, so please stay tuned for the full weather report. The weather radar picture provided courtesy of the Ministry of Transport on BSB TV 11. You can count on us. Save half price on juicy cantaloupes, only $2.99 each. Save $1.50 per pound on fresh Purdue chicken drumsticks or thighs, only $1.99 per pound. Everything's better with Blue Bonnet on it, one pound box of margarine sticks, only $1.69. Save 49 cents on an 8 ounce Swanson chicken or turkey pot pie, only $1.19. Scott shoes a size paper towels, only $2.49 per roll. All stores open until 10 p.m. for your shopping convenience. You can count on us. Tee up for golf. Join Port Royal Golf Club before February 28th and get one month free. Membership includes access to partner courses, discounts in the golf shop, PGA Grand Slam passes, use of Cambridge Beaches facilities, and more. With 25 member tournaments and the new Bella Vista Bar and Grill, we've also upped our social game. Join Port Royal and enjoy a private club experience at Bermuda's premier public course. Visit portroyalgolf.bm. This portion of the VSB News is brought to you in part by Bermuda Pest Control. For commercial and residential pest control, providing island-wide service. For free inspections and estimates, call 232-PEST. That's 232-7378. Bermuda is an easy way to find great discounts while discovering fun activities to do in Bermuda. Discover the best spas, restaurants, activities, services, and shops at 50% off. Sign up to Bermuda and start saving today. The Bermuda Hospitals Board's first ever corporate blood drive, which begins this Friday, does not mean the hospital is in dire straits where blood donors are concerned. The Valentine's Day kickoff is a means of increasing the blood donor center's current donor base. Dr. E. Atayo Fekunli, BHB consultant hematologist, puts it this way. 
And we have not re really reached a climax to the extent of not having donors in the hospital when they are needed. So, the reason why we organize this is to support the existing donors that we have. You know, the hospital rely on 100% um, voluntary donation. So we just need to um, support the existing donor pool. The existing donor pool, some of them, they are retiring, meaning they are getting above the age limit of donation. And some of them, for one reason or the other, we have to defer them from donating. So uh, while some, of course, leave the highland, um, for one reason or the other. So the, it's, it's like um, a continuous flow in, flow out each time. So that's why we need um, this um, process. We are grateful to the hundreds of loyal donors already regularly giving blood. For this reason, we are encouraging local companies and organizations to take this opportunity to make a difference by participating in our corporate blood drive. Dr. Wilson says currently only about 2% of Bermuda's population, or approximately 1,100 people, are donors. Combine the sweetness of the flute and the power of the organ, and you can create a delightfully different musical combination that stirs the soul. And that is what the duo Inversion promises to deliver on Wednesday night at the Wesley Methodist Church on Church Street. Flautist Ruth Stockdale and organist Robert Smith, better known to local festival audiences as a member of the Voices 8 singing group, talked to VSB News' Brian Darby about their unusual musical partnership. We've got a good mixture as well. We've got some more modern music. We also have anybody who um, likes church music or recognises some hymn tunes will recognise some of our pieces. Um, but three or four of our pieces are based on hymn tunes. Yeah, we, we try and make it accessible. So, you know, the organ is not thought of as an accessible instrument. Mm. It just plays hymns or, you know, it's maybe used in horror films. But, um, <laughs> <laughs> but we, I think we've got quite a varied repertoire that, you know, people can go, oh, that's a nice piece. Or they know it because it's Bach or because mm. it's Mozart. But actually some more accessible pieces by American composers and um, other people actually written for flute and organ. So excuse me saying that the flute actually kind of sweetens the organ. No. <laughs> <laughs> Well, what we like to think of it is that it's adding another stop to the organ because, of course, the flute and the organ are basically the same instrument. They're pipes, um, hence our name inversion because the, the flute is just the inverted pipe of the organ. So they can, because they can blend so much better than perhaps the flute can with the piano, which is a percussive instrument, we just think of it as adding an extra flute stop to the organ. Yeah. So, yes, and of course, you could instrument. sing along as well, couldn't you? I could, yes. Yeah, you're famous. You don't, want to, <laughs> you don't need to hear that anymore. No, nobody wants that. <laughs> And you're very young for this, aren't you? I am older than I look. It's older than me. Also. I'm older than Robert, <laughs> <laughs> but thanks. So this is your life. Uh, yes, I'm a freelance flautist, so I play with orchestras. I play, have chamber groups, and Robert and I perform a lot around London. And we've just performed at St Paul's Cathedral. We've got many recitals coming up. So yes, it's performing um, recitals and chamber music mainly for me, which is the fun. big joy. Is that the world still wants it? <laughs> yes, that that is the big joy. It's a worry that live music might die out and at the moment it's, it's showing no signs that everybody still seems to be coming to the concerts and loving them. Now, here's a look at the daily markets presented by Bias. Here are the daily markets presented by Bias. The dollar rose and global equity markets rose on Tuesday after new U.S. Federal Reserve Chairman Janet Yellen said the central bank will stick to the low interest rate strategy for now. U.S. stocks rose on remarks by Federal Reserve Chairman Janet Yellen that the central bank will likely press on with stimulus cuts as the economy strengthens. The Dow Jones Industrial Average added 1.22% and the S&P 500 gained 1.11%. The following shares traded today on the Bermuda Stock Exchange. 1,000 shares of Sendant Group, 1,000 Devonshire Industries, 1,200 shares of Bank of Butterfield, 1,000 shares of Keytech, 
and 8,000 shares of Summers Limited. The FTSE 100 added 1.23% as data showed British retail sales soared in January. German car and auto parts makers led the rally in German equities as Goldman Sachs upgraded its forecast for the industry in Western Europe. Asian equity markets were mostly higher on Tuesday, but volumes were light with Japanese markets closed. Hong Kong's Hang Seng gained 1.78% and China's Shanghai Composite was up 0.84%. Latin American markets advanced today in line with U.S. markets. The Bovespa climbed to a three-week high as a report showed slower-than-forecast inflation in Brazil. Treasury 10-year notes fell for the first time in three days as Federal Reserve Chairman Janet Yellen said reductions in the central bank's bond purchases will probably continue even amid uneven employment growth. Ten-year yields rose 5 basis points to 2.72%. The U.S. currency weakened versus most of its 16 major peers as analysts said a report this week will show retail sales stalled in January. The Australian dollar climbed to a four-week high after home prices and business sentiment improved. That was a look at the daily markets presented by Bias. There's more news after the break. Save a dollar per pound on fresh tender choice boneless pork chops, only $5.99 per pound. Fresh strawberries, just $4.99 for a one pound package. Simply 5,000 double roll toilet tissue, only $3.39 for a package of four. Cinnamons or apple and cinnamon Cheerio cereal, only $4.99 for a 12.8 ounce box. Save a dollar twenty-six on a six pack of regular or diet Pepsi soda, only $4.99. All stores open until 10 p.m. for your shopping convenience. You can can you believe it's the new year already? Well, you can start out the new year right with beautiful new furniture. Treat yourself to the living room you've always wanted or the perfect bedroom set. Our selection of dining sets is amazing. And if you're looking for a new desk or TV stand, look no further. So, whether you need a single piece or a whole house full of furniture, our huge selection is perfect for every room in your home. These prices won't last long. So call or stop in today. Did you make a resolution to save in 2014? One thing you can kiss goodbye is your internet bill. That's right, kiss your internet bill goodbye and say hello to free home internet for one year. Then you sign up for Digicel Postpaid Mobile Service. You'll get free 6 meg home internet service, a $600 value, or $50 per month towards a faster internet plan for 12 months. Offer ends March 1st, so hurry in. Terms apply. See DigicelBermuda.com for details. Be extraordinary. Digicel. Buying a new bike? Go with the company that offers brand name quality and great after-sales service. Oleander Cycles. Whether you're a daily commuter looking for a reliable ride or business owner sourcing wheels for your delivery team, you'll find bikes to suit your needs at Oleander Cycles. Oleander carries quality bikes from respected manufacturers PGO and TGB and a full line of accessories from helmets to top boxes and baby seats. Just as important as the bike is the service behind it. 
Oleanda delivers with seven-day-a-week service in our four locations, same-day service with appointments, an extensive inventory of parts, and a six-month warranty on new bikes. Visit our Hamilton or Paget showroom today. Best bikes, best service, Oleander Cycle. The Bermuda government is encouraging all of its 5,000 civil servants and teachers to support the efforts of the West Indian Association in raising funds to help the islands affected by flooding in the Caribbean by taking part in a Denim Day on February 14th, Valentine's Day. EMO Chairman and National Security Minister Michael Dunkley said the goal was to get the funds to the agencies who were directly assisting those in need, particularly Dominica, St. Lucia, and St. Vincent and the Grenadines. Minimum contribution of $5 for adults and $2 for students are encouraged, and the public's attention is directed to the Valentine Night's Caribbean Party at the Police Recreation Club on Saturday. The sports report is up next after the break. As part of the Black History Month observance, VSB TV 11 is showing relevant films on Tuesdays, Wednesdays, and Thursdays at 9 a.m. and 9 p.m. As a result, NBC network programming, including Olympic coverage, will be interrupted at these times. In celebration of Black History Month, the Defense Broadcasting Company Limited is proud to present films acknowledging the contributions made by black people throughout the world. See these historic films at 9 a.m. and 9 p.m. Tuesdays, Wednesdays, and Thursdays during Black History Month on VSB TV 11. Sponsored by Belco, Lindos, Gibbons Company, Bermuda Bistro, Caesars Pharmacy, and Sports R Us. In the first of a two-part interview, the chairman of the National Sports Center Board of Trustees, Sean Tucker, spells out why they started charging a fee to use the track on January 27th. There are a number of reasons why we've uh, decided, decided to levy the fee for access to the track. Um, first of all, um, the track is the only component of the National Sports Center facility that we've not uh, historically charged for access um, to. So users have been charged for access to the North Field. Historically, they've always been charged for access to the hockey field, uh, the South Stadium, for the Aquatic Center, for the hockey field. Every component of the uh, National Sports Center facility uh, users are charged for access. Uh, and that's the model on which this facility has been built. Um, that's the model on which we're based. We have, uh, we receive a grant from government which goes toward our operating costs, but it in no way covers all of our operating costs. And so the balance of the money we have to raise ourselves. And so we do that through uh, user fees, we do that through raising money through, through sponsorship, through the uh, corporate community. But the majority of the monies that we raise are through user fees. Mm -hmm. um, the model that we've um, used all along was not sustainable. We could not continue to subsidize the uh, cost of the track ourselves. That's the, only, th that's the only component of the facility that we did not charge for access to. And so we decided that it would be fair to the other sports governing bodies if we decided to charge for access. There are those that are saying that because of the pool, the newest addition uh, to the sports center here, that's why the maintenance of, of this facility has gone up. Any truth to that? Not true at all. In fact, every component of the sports facility of this National Sports Center has its own budget. And so the Aquatic Center has its own budget, the hockey center the hockey facility has its own budget, and the Aquatic Center budget is running on budget. Um, the the uh, our sales for January are higher than those for uh, July and August. Four teams remain in the hunt for this season's FA Challenge Cup after weekend matches. Dandytown Hornets eliminated Hamilton Parish Hot Peppers 3-1. Robin Hood edged St. George's Colts 1-0. North Village Rams shut out Southampton Rangers 5-zip, while Devonshire Cougars ousted Somerset Trojans 2-0. The weather report is next after the break.
do it. Enjoy your new shower. Experience the bold look of Kohler at a Kohler registered showroom. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to tonight's VSB weather forecast. Our weather shot is brought to us by Tracy Osborne, taking at one this afternoon. Church Bay, Just look at the colors, absolutely stunning. Beautiful greens in the foliage, and the water is just incredible blues, uh, kind of dark blues near the reefs. A little bit of seaweed on the sand, but look at that sky. Absolutely gorgeous. Just a couple of clouds, even though apparently we did get a couple of isolated showers during the day. But thank you, Tracy, for sending in this very vibrant shot. Temperatures for today, we had a high of 70 at 11 in the morning and a low of 66 at 6 in the morning. Current conditions, 66 degrees, humidity, 80%. Winds are variable at 5 knots and barometric pressure is steady at 30.10 inches. Rainfall index the month of February, 1.21 for yearly total of 7.44. Yearly normal for this time is 7.27 inches. And looking at the satellite, light and variable winds with a few passing mainly light showers are expected tonight as weak high pressure builds from the north. Winds then rapidly increase Wednesday morning well ahead of an active cold front that brings gale, showers and a risk of thunder. Thursday evening through early Friday morning. Conditions then settle on Friday afternoon. And taking a look at the gateway cities, Atlanta, freezing rain, 33. Boston, mostly sunny, 24. Charlotte, snow, and 30. London, heavy rain, and 48. Miami, 83, partly cloudy. New York, 26, mostly sunny. Orlando, 81, mostly cloudy. Philadelphia, partly cloudy, and 28. Toronto, mostly sunny and 25, and Washington, partly cloudy and 31 degrees. Back at home tonight, mostly cloudy with a few showers, low near 64. Winds variable at 5 knots, and then varying west-southwest 8 to 12 knots, and then increasing to 10 to 15 knots later. Tomorrow, sunny periods with one or two showers, a few showers overnight with a high, yeah, high near 70. Winds kept blowing out of the west, 12 to 18 knots, then increasing to 15 to 20 knots in the late morning, and then sort of veering northerly at 15 to 25 knots in the afternoon, and veering again northeast, 20 to 25 knots in the evening. Marine tonight, no warnings. Seas inside the reef, 0 to 1 foot. Seas outside of the reef, 3 to 6 feet. Sea surface temperature is 71 degrees. And marine tomorrow, we've got a small craft warning from the late afternoon with seas inside the reef, 1 to 2 feet. Seas outside the reef, 5 to 8 feet. High tide will be at 6.50 in the morning, and low tide will be at 1.14 in the afternoon. And looking at the five-day forecast, Thursday, cloudy, few showers, increasing with a risk of thunder by the evening. Windy with a high near 72. Friday, sunny periods, early showers, risk of thunder, settling later. Windy, high near 70. Saturday, partly cloudy, occasional showers, and a chance of thunder overnight. Windy with a high near 71. And Sunday, partly cloudy with a high near 67. Thank you to Michelle Pitcher, our meteorologist for tonight, and everyone at the Bermuda Weather Service. I'm Rachel Sodden. Have a great evening. Thanks for tuning in to the TV11 News. Good night. Peter Cattell's attire, courtesy of A.S. Cooper & Sons Limited. Wardrobe and makeup for Rachel Sodden, provided by Gibbons Company. VSB TV 11, Bermuda.